Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. Now, I'm a big fan of the Prodigy and especially the CD Music for the Jilted Generation when, well, that one came out a long, long time ago. Yes, I'm that old. Um, I was a big fan of that band or whatever, music collection or whatever you could call it. So when a sound card came out with the name Prodigy on it, I thought, well, I just couldn't let this one go. So I got it and I did a review. So this is it, it's the ESI Prodigy 7.1 Hi-Fi sound card. And I already have another ESI card, it's here, it's the X-Fi NRG sound card. A uh, sound card that I made a video about a little bit earlier, so I'm going to leave a description below in the, in the description link below. Um, I was kind of fond of that card because it, it didn't really sound that great. It couldn't match up to, to, the, to today's expectations, mainly because of its bit rate and sampling rate. But it was a nice uh, sound card to see. It's aesthetically beautiful because it's the whitewash and, and everything. I thought it looked really nice. It looked pleasing inside your system. And that's the same as with this card. It's also white. It has this nice metal shroud. It's a nice looking sound card. So if you want to have something that looks nice in your system, get this one. But if you wonder how does it sound, let's go a bit further and let's see what's inside this sound card. Now the Prodigy isn't sold anymore. It's I got mine second hand, but when it did come out in 2012, it was about 120 euros. Nowadays you're happy to find one on eBay for well less than 200 euros. So it's not a cheap card, so the quality must have been great, at least according to the 2012 standards. The card sadly is a PCI card, but back then it was okay, but nowadays it's becoming increasingly rare that there is a PCI slot on your motherboard. The X5 NRG is a PCI Express card. So I'm wondering as to why ESI chose to use PSI for this card. Choosing PCI Express back then would make it, make it a bit more future-proof eight years ago. The audio processor that is used is the VIA VT1724 or the NV24HT from VIA's Vinyl series. Of course, this is just a marketing trick to make it sound as it's more authentic as an old record player. But there's nothing vinyl about this sound card. According to the website of VIA, it's an extremely high performance audio processor with 24-bit performance and at 192 kilohertz sampling rate. The VIA NV24HD provides the highest audio playback and recording quality available to the PC audio enthusiast. Back in the days, 24 bits and 192 kilohertz may have sound like it's really good, but nowadays it's more or less the standard. And some cards are even moving towards the 32 bits and 384 kilohertz sampling rates. But at least it's not a 16-bit audio processor, so I got my hopes up. But by using the NV24 HD, it was cousins with the infamous M Audio 9624, which is still being sold as an audiophile sound card this day. Again, there's this is a marketing trick. There's nothing uh, audiophile about this card, because I know someone who has it, and he had a lot of troubles with this card. Now, the only thing that is good with this card is that you have the ability to connect a lot of devices to it and that's also something that is in common with the Prodigy. You have a lot of connectors to it so you can connect a lot of devices to it. Speakers, it has an optical in, an optical out, a front in and front out and it has the possibility to attach eight speakers, hence the 7.1, a microphone and a line in. ESI or, or AudioTrack could have opted to use an add-on card like the Terratech Orion did. Uh, I made a video about that card not so long ago. I will leave a link in the description below. But I think that's a nicer way to give the card extra connectivity and not a breakout cable. 
So what else is on the sound card? Now, the Prodigy is one of the first cards to have a metal shroud to eliminate electromagnetic interference. Although the Essence SST was before and there were other cards, it still wasn't very common in those days to put EMI shielding on the sound card. Maybe primarily because the audio sound already, oh, sorry, the onboards sound already sucked, EMI shielding wasn't going to improve it in any way. It was really hard to get this card working. The drivers were kind of working, but I had to have several installation attempts to get it working. But sadly, in the Windows 10 version, or that's where I installed the card on, the Q sound settings were lost, mainly because this functionality only works with Windows XP. Now, I don't have a machine with Windows XP because I'm too afraid to attach it to the internet, but because it will become a zombie computer within minutes. Now, QSound was a technology developed back in the 90s, and it's a hat-related transfer function, which is in simple terms a way, or an algorithm, to be more precise, that calculates the distortion needed to make sound appear it's coming from a direction. This way you can have a two-speaker setup and make it, well, more surround. QSound did a nice job. It wasn't all down to adding more and more echoes to it. There were also some albums recorded with Q-Sound, like the Immaculate Connection by Madonna. There's also a, an album by Paula Abdul. There's also a Roger Waters album, Amused to Death, who was also with Q-Sound. There were also some other games that were created with Q-Sound, but they're so obscure that, they're, well, I couldn't find any of them. So it's, I was kind of sad to see that this functionality in the driver was gone, because I would have, well, tested it itself tested it out, sorry. The driver interface itself is rather Spartan, as you can see, but so much Spartan that I just couldn't figure out directly how to operate the settings. It may seem like it's obvious, but well, in reality, it isn't. The manual wasn't much of a help either because it's, no, it's a tiny manual, but in the end, I got it working and I did some listening sessions. So I tried to make an analysis with Rightmark Audio Analyzer just to see if the listening sessions that I did bear any fruit because during the listening sessions I found that the bass was sort of lacking, the middle was too much overpowered and the highs, well, they weren't just there. Um, it was the same kind of quality that you would get from, a onboard, from an onboard sound card like a normal Realtek codec, but I just couldn't get any results out of Rightmark Audio Analyzer. Now I get decent results with most sound cards that I try and test, but I just couldn't get a nice numbers and a nice test out of it. Uh, I don't know why that is. I think it's down to the drivers because I could get other sound cards to get a nice analysis out of that. Um, it may be down to the sound card, but I doubt it. And I just so I think it's a driver issue. Maybe it's because it's a tiny little driver and it just couldn't handle the testing. So would I recommend this sound card? Well, as you may have guessed, I will not. Uh, the driver issue is too big for me. The sound quality wasn't that good. The fact that it's PCI and not PCI Express is also a downside. Uh, those are just too much to outweigh the issue of the, the pro that it has, sorry. It's a well-designed card. I think it's aesthetically pleasing. Now, I really think it's one of the more most beautiful cards that I have. Uh, also, the uh, ESI NRG is also a really nice card to look at. So, with this ending, I would like to thank you all for watching this video all the way to the end. And I would like to see you in the next one. See you then. Bye-bye.